this webinar. I'm Nick Solovich, editor of Auto Remarketing's sister publication, Subprime Auto Finance News, and Buy Here, Pay Here report. Thank you for joining us for the next installment in the Auto Remarketing training series. Today's webinar is brought to you by Mannheim, your wholesale source for vehicles and more. Information is available at mannheim.com. And also, Automotive Media and CarClicks.com, your advertising stores. For more information, go to CarClicks.com. So thank you again for joining us today for the Auto Remarketing Training Series. Uh, before we get started with our today's uh, presenters, just want to go through a couple of quick uh, housekeeping items for today's webinar. First, make sure you've dialed in phone number provided in your patient email, or you're able to listen in via your PC speaker. We are recording today's ARTS webinar, and we'll make that recording available to you in the coming days, so you can share it with other people at your store, or have a listen again to great information that our presenters are going to share. We'll be in listen-only mode for this webinar, but we will reserve some time after each presentation for a question and answer session. You can submit your questions at any time using the questions box on the GoToWebinar control panel. And if uh, we don't have a chance to get to your question today, don't worry, because we'll forward them to each of our trainers so they can respond to you directly via email. Lastly, if you have any difficulties during today's webinar, just click on the hand icon on the GoToWebinar control panel, and then a member of our production team will get to the problem as quickly as possible. And so please stay tuned after our, each of our presenters for some more information regarding the services we have to offer and some other upcoming events we have planned. So I'd like to begin uh, today's session by introducing our first presenter, who is Chris Hill from Mannheim. He's the Director of Special Projects with the Mannheim Wholesale Institute. And he's going to be touching on his presentation entitled, Raise Your Game with Mannheim, Knowledge is the Formula for Winning, as well as some of the other that Mannheim has. Welcome to the webinar. You have entered that. So Chris, the webinar session is now yours. Well, thank, thank you very, you very much, much. I appreciate it. Uh, there's uh, an echo, echo in the background, background so maybe just to mute their, their speaker there. Yeah. Make it easier for everyone to hear. Give it just a second there. All right. Go ahead and get started. So, um, again, yeah, uh, part of the promotion here is about, you know, uh, educating our customers and making sure that customers are more familiar and confident when using our tools. So uh, we've got a whole month-long promotion, which I'll talk about here at the end, about just finding out more information about how all of our tools function. So um, today I want to focus strictly on finding the right inventory with Mannheim. So that can be a daunting task for anyone that's trying to source um, you know, wholesale inventory um, to augment you know, what you have at your dealership and what you're getting in on trade. So I know when that, when that, when that process comes up, you just sort of sit down and say, gosh, you got to um, you know, load up a lot. I gotta you know, get some additional vehicles because we're maybe not seeing the trades or the right mix of trades at our, at our dealership. Um, you know, sitting down to start that process can be a little daunting. So I'll, I'll walk you through some tips and tricks and best practices on, on what you can do to um, make the best use of the tools available so that um, you have everything you need in front of you. So we'll go ahead and get started. So you know, typically uh, this may be a forgive me, maybe a poor representation of uh, of your dealership, but this is just sort of a, a general mock-up, if you will. So you see all the happy customers running around. But every day uh, at your lot and somewhere at your dealership, one of the most cruelest things happens, right? We actually sell the uh, the best vehicle in the best position at our dealership, right? And then, of course, like I was just saying, that that now daunting process, that daunting task of having to replenish that inventory, uh, is now sort of in front of you. So you. If you look what you had on site and you know maybe what you just traded for, maybe that's not the right mix either, right? So the, the 2001 Pontiac Aztec, that's, that's not going to work for our needs, right? And, uh, and maybe that, that, uh, that Volvo 850 that just came in with 900,000 miles, that's not going to work either. So again, we're sort of 
forced to sort of think about well, where else are we going to source. So a lot of folks these days, you know, they, they're, they're more prone to using online tools, but let's just pretend for just a second here, maybe you're not. So I'll, I'll talk about that guy. And that guy says, well, you know, I'm just going to have to go down to the auction, right? That's where I've gone for years. It's where I'm most comfortable with. You know, I like to see, uh, you know, real-time values. I like the you know, touch and feel and yada, yada. Well, my dad was in the business for a long time, and this may be no one here, but the first thing we used to do when we walk in was you know, pick up that run sheet. And even then, this is you know, late 90s or 2000s, I kept saying, I, I can't believe we're just now looking at the inventory that we're going to walk. And I've had a lot of people tell me, well, Chris, you know, there's still a lot of inventory we can check in at the auction you know, on field day, so we grab one of those so we can still see you know, what's new versus maybe what we already researched. But a lot of people sort of make that as an excuse of why they didn't really do research the day before anything. So we come out, right, and we, we poke around over here, and, you know, maybe you try to see, you know, what's what's going on in the front. We stop in and check in and shake out with some folks at the, the front desk, and then we poke back over here. And then so finally we get in our lanes. You know, I didn't see anything there, didn't see anything there. We get back to the dealership, and we still got those two glaring holes. So then, again, like I said a couple minutes ago, you sit down and you think, well, okay, i got to get online, and now look at all this, all this stuff I have in front of me, right? So, I just need to source inventory. Look at all these different tools I have. You know, there's some buy. Maybe I got, you know, I'm thinking about some, some aged vehicles that I'm sitting on. Maybe I need to sell. But again, it sort of feels like there's a lot going on here. So in the whole realm of just finding the inventory, let's try to get rid of a lot of the noise. Let's try to, let's try to move on and focus it on, on one thing. Because again, I don't want you sitting here for multiple hours chained to your desk all day. Because you have appraisals to do, you have people to manage, you have multiple processes at your dealership. And having you Back here in this office all day long is going to cut it. So this is what we're here, right? So in, in, in regards of find, and, and we did um, all these uh, all this research last year, um, this is marketing research to find out in these different categories, you know, what your thoughts are around it. So I need to find the right vehicles that, that are critical to your business. And I need to I need to be more efficient when I'm when I'm online to get new produced in that wasted time. Um, I just want it to be easily manage. I don't want to have to mess around with this stuff. I don't want to, have to spend all day you know, doing this. I just want it to be done. Um, and then finally, you know, if I don't, if I don't find what I need. I need to know how I can find similar vehicles. Right? So if I missed out on a bid, I lost lost the vehicle, you know, in a live sale or something like that. How can how can I sort of still continue that process? So here's a couple of quick hits and a couple of things you can do that will really make an impact on the on the time you spend at Manhunt.com. So first and foremost, um, I ask a lot of folks, you know, how do you search for vehicles? And a lot of people say, well, I, maybe I look at some of the run sheet and the walk in the auction, or maybe I, I am, you know, more progressive and, and I'm and using more tools. I look at the, the pre sale list online, and that's fine too. Um, but if you're looking for specific units, so if you saw on our on our dry erase board, they're saying, you know, we had a couple specific needs we know were selling well. So we saw some Malibus. We had a need for Malibu, right? So when you're when you're more specific. Um, it's better to be sort of more targeted. And a lot of people say, yeah, I use Power Search, and I, and I go in there and I, I do some different things. But a lot of people don't know that at Manheim, in your search tools, you actually have what's called keyword search. And that just allows you to freehand text in anything you, anything that you, you need to find. And you can really start out in a more broad pattern by typing keywords rather than selecting these individual boxes. The way the system works is, is you know, garbage in, garbage out. So, you know, sometimes those vehicles are being listed, not the appropriate information is placed in the right spot. Um, sometimes, you know, some of the information about a vehicle, like trim or color or anything, sometimes that's just omitted as well. So starting out with keywords will actually allow you to search in a more broad pattern because you're going to search all the verbiage associated with vehicles at manhunt.com. And that includes vehicles that are going to come up with simulcast, vehicles that are on OBE, and everything in the system. Oops. Once you're there, and once you've sort of typed in a little bit of that criteria, then you've got all these different rich features to then, uh, you know, whittle that down and get that down to a more manageable list. Let's do a real a demonstration of that. So I'm going to come over here, and again, uh, if you saw my dry erase board a second ago, I had a strong need for a specific type of car. So instead of, instead of going down here, guys, instead of going down here in this area and, and, and clicking these boxes, I'm just going to type it right there, 2007 Malibus, and I'm going to click and then you can see from there, you know, I've got it very specific to my needs, and I can I can whittle that down based on some price, based on you know I only want to search for vehicles with condition report, all the things that you've probably seen before. But again, starting off broadly allows me to find a more rich uh, um, um, amount of search results. The next thing is that it's called sales schedule. So 
I sort of associated this in two ways. When I go to the grocery store, if I'm really good, I'll write down a list and I know what I need. Other times I go to the grocery store and I just browse around. And when, I, you know, when I'm walking the aisle, I'm like, oh, yeah, I know I needed that. I know I needed that. So that's sort of what I think about when I, when I know um, how our customers are using um, the sales schedule list and the, and the pre-sale list. Looking at that inventory sometimes reminds you what you need. So instead of looking at just a pre-sale list, I want to introduce you to a little, little tool called sales schedule. The sales schedule is just under the buy tab and it's just the sales schedule. I'll show you the benefits of that next year. So again, we're going to go to sales schedule, and this is still based on the, the specific auction that you intend to, 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 to search from, right? The first one is, was about the vehicle and being targeted. This one is about just browsing the auction that you're going to be shopping at um, for that day or week. So let's say I'm going to Nashville, and I want to look at all the vehicles in this sale. So now I start off with almost 3,000 vehicles up there. But now I can start to whittle this down and get this even more specific to my needs. So let's say I'm, you know, I have a couple of different needs for maybe I'm buying for a dealership group. So I'll click all those and click on update. We'll cut that down, cut that list immediately in half. And we'll come down and we'll we'll define a little bit more. So say I only want to see the vehicles that are the clean to extra clean in regards to um, the conditional field. So now we've gotten that from 3,000 vehicles to 250 vehicles. And again, we can continue to refine that even more. Also, as we move along, we just see something that interests us. There's a little feature called workbook that we can add vehicles to. Now, this is one of those, most people know what a workbook is. Um, and forgive me if you don't, I'll explain it. But you know, you know that just you clicking on that, you can just take that vehicle and save it to where you can find it later on. But a lot of pe people just say, you know, I, I don't really need that. Maybe if I really in love with a car, I'll put it on there. But the you know, things I'm interested in, I just sort of you know glance and move on. You wouldn't be surprised how many calls we get at Manheim uh, Customer Care Center of people asking for a vehicle they saw and now they can't find it anymore. And it's probably still out there, they just can't remember how they searched for it initially. And you know, the call typically sounds like, hey, I was looking online, I was looking at a vehicle at uh, um, Georgia, no, Atlanta, no, Lane 6, Lane 7. It, it's sort of this precious process of trying to figure out what, where it was and it just we can't, it, we're unable to access. So I always say, anytime you just have marginal interest in a vehicle, just add it to the workbook. You know, you can take it off later on, you can delete it, what have you, but don't miss out on vehicles that strike your eye because if you watch that vehicle in the lane or, or you see it pop up on OBE, maybe the price changes or maybe there's more images or maybe there's something else that will make you more interested in the vehicle than you were previously. But workbook's a great feature. Not just because you can save it in one place and access it later because, again, it just helps you not miss anything that you may have some serious interest in. It's a brand new tool out there um, uh, at manhunt.com and power search and an OBE. And it really allows you to sort of say, and I've heard this for years, and Chris, you know, and my dad was like this too, I'll buy anything if I can buy it right. And maybe that's you, maybe it's not. But I've heard the comment from enough customers where I thought, you know, BD to create a tool that could sort of help people find them. So where are the motivated sellers? Who are the people that are aggressively selling inventory? Maybe they've owned it, you know, 180 days. Maybe they've owned it 90 days. You know, maybe it's just 65. Whatever. Some there are customers out there that are selling vehicles in Manhattan that are extremely motivated to move that inventory so they can buy other inventory and place it on the lot. So Manhattan now has this tool that's called Value Percentage that allows you to find those types of sellers. So I'll use that value percentage tool um, here on OVE. It's available either OVE or manhunt.com. So I'm going to say show me vehicles with a condition report that are you know, clean to extra clean, that have this make and offer feature, right? So the seller actually had to engage that make and offer feature on their own. That allows you know, other buyers out there to present offers. Now we're going to use this value percentage. They show me vehicles that are 80% to 100% of average MMR. And take out the ones that don't have any um, MMR value at all. And again, this is, these are OVE listings, and I was looking for you know, specifically about vehicles that were allowed to make an offer as well. But very quickly, I just found over 100 vehicles where the value is both either 100% or below average MMR. The seller has indicated that they'd be willing to accept offers even lower than their buy it now price. Now, if that's not a motivated fund, I don't know what is. So this is just a, you know, as I'm out there, you know, working with our customers and, you know, doing TWI workshops. I always like to show people this example of a search because the people say, you know, maybe on OBE, the motivated seller just aren't there. And I say, you know, with this tool, you can now find them. So 
The next solution is, again, like I was saying a second ago, I showed you how we can just click and add a few of those listings to our workbook. I want to show you another value to the workbook itself, rather than you know, just, just adding some vehicles in there. What else can we do inside that workbook? So inside the workbook, um, I'll sort of reverse it and show you again. Inside the workbook, as we're going through and looking at condition reports, as we're looking at comments from the sellers, looking at you know anything out there, there may be things that that, that you know, we want to pay some special attention to. Like you know, if we were looking at a condition report, we noticed that there may be some rust on the vehicle, you know, three to four inches. Well, I simply just left a note in my in my workbook about this being a big deal for me, right? So this is something I'm going to check out later on. And I want to make sure that, I, that I'm aware of this and maybe I'm going to visit this vehicle at the sale. So I'm going to go and see the vehicle in person. So I'm going to take a note of that because, again, that could be a deal for And then no matter where I am, if I'm at the auction, if I'm out and about, I can still see all those notes that are on, on the vehicles that I've already spent all that time researching. Another great note to leave yourself is about pricing as well. As I'm pricing vehicles, you know, I'm looking to see where the market is on a vehicle, where I want to be on this vehicle if it gets across the when it crosses the block. So I'm doing all this research, and pricing is one that just leaving yourself a quick note could help when you get, you know, on a simulcast or when you get in the lane and you sort of out into the heat of, of bidding and, and, and don't want to you know, reduce what potential profit you have to make on a unit. So I was just like, you know, from your workbook adding a note about some damage that may be a deal breaker, adding a note about you know, value as I've searched you know, all the guides out there just to help keep me in line when, when I do need to get in there and, and source these deals. So we get to the auction, go right in the workbook, and you can see everything that we've already added there previously, go to those comments, and there it is. Front bumper cover, had some previous repair, it was some standard. You know, I'm going to walk out, I'm going to go see that myself and just see, you know, is it that bad? And we can also, again, from the workbook, we can always access that condition report. That's really key because as we're doing all this work, you know, to, 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 to remember these cars, when we get out to the auction, if we're going to visit the cars in person, well, we can use that condition report right there as a second set of eyes. So use it to help us walk the car again because what we saw online, and now we want to see additional information because of the way that we know how to walk cars, and it's accessible right there. So that's another key value for using the workbook feature. So in the, one of the final steps here uh, in this whole find category, and this is one of those, I, 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 I talk to the customers about this, and I always feel like it's one of those where it's like your mom telling you to clean your room. You know you're supposed to do it, and it's, you know, you know it's, it's important, but you just never do it. So it's about safe search. You know, if we spent a couple of minutes here doing a quick search, we typed in our keyword, or we looked at our, our um, sales schedule, we sorted that down to a manageable amount, and maybe we didn't find a unit. Maybe you know we got it so finite that there was only a handful, or maybe we got it down to you know a manageable number. But we still didn't see anything we're interested in. Why spend that time later on today and do this again? Why spend the time and run this search again tomorrow when we get to the office? It's just a waste of time. And again, your time—you're probably one of the most critical people at your dealerships. Your time is much better served out on the floor testing deals, appraising, whatever it is that, that you're the, the cornerstone for, rather than redoing these searches five, ten plus times a day. So just click on the Save Search button right there. Up pops you know, a little menu there. I can give it a name. If you want to get an email notification and I can know when the vehicle comes online, you can do that. Or if you just want to you know, log in to Mannheim and see the vehicle available, you can do that too. Here's the true value of Save Search. So I look at those Malibus. I didn't see that I liked a little while ago or yesterday. I log in today and I see there are five new ones today versus six total in the marketplace based on all the criteria that I, I define. I just want to go to those new vehicles. So I can click any one of these numbers here in our safe search, right when we log into manheim.com and go directly to the new um, vehicle that we're listed to. So again, very basic stuff. It's you know it's not rocket science at all, but I really try to tell the value of what some of these things are because you know you see safe search, you sort of think maybe I should do it. But if you knew that you could get to that fresh inventory faster and reduce wasted time here at Manheim.com, hopefully that's a real um, um, big deal for you to maybe want to use this potentially. You can also get text, but you know each their own. If it's the black black with the roof with the leather under twenty thousand miles, you know, and it's in my backyard, it's priced right. You know, and if it's grade you know, five or four, you better want to get an email or a text from that quickly. But other than that, you may just want to just save the search and, and, and log in and find it in there. The last piece here, and this is 
um, some, you know, relatively newer technology in the grand scheme of things is the ability just to, to get data in real time. And I like to call it just-in-time data. So it's about being able to, you know, know what's going on in the car. And like the person that told me, you know, cars that weren't on the pre-sell list, they weren't on the sales schedule, they just got checked into the auction, well, we can still scan and get MMR data and get condition report information. Maybe it wasn't available online the night before. We can still get all that while we're walking cars or when we're on the block. You know, it's, it's just as quickly as, you know, you get down there in the lane, scan that bin, you find that MMR, and you can access the condition reports, add it to your workbook so you don't have to scan it again when it crosses the block and fight everybody else that's out there elbow to elbow trying to get that information about the block. So you may not be a fan of notes. I like to make a couple notes here just to, just to sort of summarize a couple of things I just talked about. So in the regards of finding inventory, you want it just allows you to be faster in the way that you find um, that you perform your searches. It allows you to look for very specific things like DVD or navigation. Uh, there was a gentleman last week that was looking for vehicles that were wheelchair accessible. He said, my whole business is built on wheelchair accessible vans. So we simply typed in the word wheelchair in the keyword, and then we selected um, the, from the vehicle segment type, we just checked van. So very quickly, we found 30 vehicles, whereas before he was looking at all vans and going through all the comments to see if uh, wheelchair was there. Plus, you get more search results. So again, <clears throat> Not all the data is always entered into the system in the appropriate way. So when that occurs or when that happens, you know, it's hard when you're checking those boxes and you perform that initial search to land on a good quality um, search result. So just typing in a keyword will allow you to search all the information about that vehicle. Sales schedule. So again, if you're using a free sales schedule online, you're, you're, you're way ahead of the curve. But consider using the sales schedule. You're just taking the best tools from PowerSearch and incorporating them into a pre-sale. You can find more specific inventory in the upcoming sale. So if you are used to using pre-sale lists, you usually click on it, click on the sale, they show all. You got you know five, six pages of, of results. Well, why do that when you can just quickly go into the type you're looking for? Maybe you only buy from well, rental, maybe you only buy from an OEM. Whatever that is, go to that and reduce your wasted time. Plus, sale schedule or um, doing a keyword search, any one of those can be you know, done very easily, so you can you know, save them and run them over and over and over again, rather than having to perform that every single time. Then there's workbook. The workbook just, you know, you just keep anything in a, in a folder so you can access it later on. You know, maybe later on you go back in there, you see it, you don't want it, but at least you, you keep in tabs of vehicles that you have some interest in. You can save one unit, or you can save them all. If you get a search result back of six, you can just click on the All button, put them all in there. Plus, you can stay more focused by keeping those notes about, you know, condition information, notes about where you want to be on the vehicle, you know, when it's on the block, things like that. Um, plus, it gives you that accessibility between how you access the vehicles online and did that research the night before, and now you can bring up that same information when you're, you know, at the sale or at the auction day of. And save searches. Don't do them over and over again. It's wasted time. It, it's, it's, it's redundant just to do the same search and the same criteria over and over and over again. Plug this in once and be done with it. And when you're done sourcing that type of inventory, just delete the search. Um, plus, you can always get to the freshest inventory first and be notified when that fresh inventory becomes available. So finally, I want to leave you with, you know, I, I hit you with a lot of information very quickly. So hopefully some of that stuff, hopefully some of that maybe sparked your interest. Maybe you're like, Chris, you know, it was great stuff. I'd like to show some of the folks at my dealership. Maybe I'm not the guy that does a lot of this, but I, you know, I got a couple guys that do a lot of this this type of uh, inventory um, acquisition. So if you if you want to sort of share this with them, um, you're more than welcome to. Like I said at the beginning of our presentation, we have a whole whole promotion going uh, for the, the next month about raising your game. And you know, as far as promotions go, they're usually sort of make the jump through some moves and do some, some different types of things. This is really about hey, spend some time and, and get to know a little bit more of the, the tools that we provide for you to make it easier to do the business you need to do. So, and through that process, that learning process, you get the opportunity to you know, win some prizes and, and, and you know, some potential you know, unprizes as well. But again, the really bigger promotion is about um, raising your game in regards to the tools you use to make it easier for you to do business. So, um, if, you, if you like some of this information you saw today, go to manhunt.com and click on the Raise Your Game promo and you can start to you know, get more uh, information about other tools and, and find out about sort of the different pieces of use you have out there. But also, you've got all these videos available. So the, what I just showed you here just now, the last 25 minutes, 
you'll see it's available right now. You can go and click on it and watch it again. So thank you for your time today. Sorry to pack a lot in a short amount of time, but hopefully you have some follow-up. Excellent presentation, Chris, as always. A lot, of, a lot of great information and a lot of ways that uh, dealers can, can improve their, their search capabilities to, to find the inventory that they need. Uh, just, to, just to quickly follow up, uh, Chris, and if you do have any questions, be sure to use the questions box on the, on the GoToWebinar control panel uh, to, to ask any, any questions of Chris Hill from, from Mannheim. I, with the with NAAA keeping uh, notes that the volumes in the lanes keep getting uh, higher and higher and stronger and stronger, just how much more valuable uh, are the are these search tools in light of, of more off lease volume, more trade in volume, just just more cars in the lanes nowadays? Yeah, it's yeah. you know it, I think over the last couple of years it's got it, it got sort of easy to sort of say well there's not a lot out there so I don't have to spend as much time you know sort of doing this research because everyone sort of knew where the good cars were and, and it was sort of they sort of stuck out like sore thumbs. And I was a, like you said that uh, the inventory levels have, have risen and knowing how to use these tools and access these um, these, these inventories are really more important. And the thing I think about is. Volume is, is also, you know, businesses are doing better at a lot of dealerships as well. You're probably getting a lot of unwanted trades or vehicles that don't work for your mix. So knowing how to go and find the vehicles and find the, the right vehicles has never been more important. So uh, if you got nothing else out of today, know that what I just showed you is available online and through our promotion the next month, you can jump in there and refresh you and your team and anyone else that needs that information to be more efficient. Very good. That's Chris Hill. He's the uh, Director of Special Projects with Mannheim's The Whole Wholesale Institute. Thank you so much again, Chris. Thank you, Nick. Moving on to our, our next presenter this afternoon during our uh, auto remarketing training series webinar I, is Tony French, He's the president and founder of Automotive Internet Media and Click.com. And he's going to share with share with us today, uh, finding more in-market auto shoppers. We've learned how to find inventory, so let's learn more about how to, how to turn that inventory and, and raise our uh, sales figures. So, Tony, uh, the webinar is now yours. All right. Thank you, Nick. Can you hear me okay with no, uh, no vibration in the background or anything? Uh, we're good to go. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for attending uh, today's webinar. And it, we uh, listened uh, to Chris Hill with Mannheim, and Chris was uh, very provided us some valuable information about where to source the cars. Now, once you get the cars on your lot, uh, now what do you do? Because everybody knows, like the internet is a great place to market your inventory. But are you getting enough real buyers to consider your vehicles? You know, you've acquired the inventory, you've spent time and money and, uh, and uh, I guess, resources on reconditioning. You've taken great photos, you've priced them competitively, and you've written a very compelling description. All you need is more customers. So this webinar will share how to get real auto shoppers who are in your market I'm sorry, Tony. It 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 appears as if uh, we're not not seeing your uh, slide presentations. We can hear you just fine, but not seeing uh, your presentation. All right. Well, I'm connected. Can you can you hand? Uh, I guess give me the controls again. How about now? I'm I'm afraid we're afraid we're not seeing it. Show my screen. Oh, I, I What what do you what, see? What do you, I'm 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 getting some some uh, feedback that I guess some other folks are seeing it, but perhaps I am not. Yeah, I. 
Yeah, it says audience view 100%. Okay, great. Well, I, I apologize then. As, as long as our audience can see, uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. All right, so uh, basically what we're trying to do is to, uh, you know, help you find more in-market auto shoppers, you know, uh, consumers that are actually looking for inventory um, and would actually consider and buy your inventory, all right? So when you look at the way dealers are spending their advertising dollars nowadays, right? So NADA, um, I don't know if you guys have ever been to the NADA website and looked at this data. Every year they put out uh, dealer data. And in 2013, they looked at where dealers are still spending their money, right? And, you know, television is doing okay, radio and everything. The Internet has actually surpassed them all. And since 2003, it's up 30%, right? So the Internet is uh, where consumers are going to look for inventory before they actually hit the dealership, before they actually call your store, send an email lead. They're all going online. You know, matter of fact, RL Polk, they interviewed 2,000 people that just bought a vehicle, and what they found was over 60% of the people that just bought that vehicle found that vehicle or that dealership that they purchased from uh, on the Internet. So it's 15 times greater than TV, radio, newspaper combined, right? But when you look at, again, back to where dealers are still spending their money, they're overwhelmingly leaving a lot of opportunity uh, from the uh, on the internet, right? So we produce we provide lots of services to dealers, right? So what we find is the dealers that are actually dominating the sales are dominating the internet. All right. So you say, hey, I'm with Auto Trader, and Auto Trader is a great platform to advertise your advertise your inventory, right? But Auto Trader has a marketplace. You know, this is Compete data. Compete says that AutoTrader gets around 6 million unique visitors, right? Could be a little low, but this is a service that I'm going to use to compare all these different sites. AutoTrader around 6.6 .6 million. And if you look at Cars.com, a little over 6 million. So most, most dealers are saying, hey, I'm with AutoTrader, I'm with Cars.com, I might throw a little bit of money at the pay-per-click through Cobalt or Dealer.com or somebody like that. Hey, I've got this internet thing covered. Well, really? Because if you look, AOL Autos, AOL Autos has about 5 million unique auto shoppers every single month. In some months, it's more than Cars.com. You look at Car and Driver. Car and Driver has, you know, almost 2 million in some months. Um, unique auto shoppers go into their site to look at inventory, to research cars. Same thing with Motor Trend. Over 2 million auto shoppers every single month. And I bet most people didn't know this, but Yahoo Autos, has more unique auto shoppers than anybody. Yahoo Autos is the most, uh, uh, it's, it has more unique visitors than anybody. If you look, whoops, over 10 million people, right? So these third-party sites are great because if you're, looking, if you're looking for inventory as a consumer, and I can tell you, I, I'm in the process right now of looking for a car for my wife. She wants a specific used car. Where am I going? I'm going to these sites, right? I'm looking at the auto traders and cars.com and the, and the car gurus, you know, and the Yahoo autos. I'm trying to find a specific car. But if I find that car, I'm not going to put my information in a third-party portal, right? Nobody does that anymore. I mean, this is, this is uh, Mitch Gallup. He's the president of cars.com. Great guy. He spoke at a conference that we had. And basically, Mitch said that, 96% of the people that go to cars.com aren't sending phone and email leads, right? Only 4% of the people that actually go there would actually uh, send, a, send a lead. So this is a quote from Mitch. The lead train has left the station and the consumer's not on it, right? So what do you need to do as a dealer? You need to get people to your website. So part of the services that my company provides is we, we do organic SEO. We do pay-per-click. We do retargeting. We have this product called CarClicks that I'm going to talk to you more about uh, today. We do blogging and social media and email marketing. We build websites. But we do all of this with the single goal of getting more traffic to the dealership website, getting 
good traffic, right? So this is a Chrysler dealer that we that we work with. We worked with them for a few years. When we first started with them back in uh, 2011, they had around nine uh, nine thousand people on average to their website every month. Within a couple years, we increased that up to 115 percent. If you look at that dealership today, they're getting over 40,000 people to their website on a monthly basis. And they're one of the top selling uh, Chrysler dealers in the Midwest. So what we believe is we believe that traffic is the new lead. You know, I mean, when you look at leads from third party sites, a lot of times you'll buy a lead from a third party site and you'll find out that you're your competitor down the street is working that same lead because they bought it too. I mean, you got to be really careful in the lead game. So what we do is we find shoppers in your market and drive them to your website. And what we, the, the beauty of the program is we land them specifically on your inventory because Cobalt did a, a research study that examined really the buying process and what what shoppers actually do. They looked at 9 million vehicle detail page views, 125 million website visits, and they studied 250 million online actions. That's a lot of data. And they found, sorry about this, I don't know why this keeps happening, but they found that the average new vehicle stays on the lot 53 days. And that average vehicle, that 53-day-old vehicle, gets looked at less than 20 times. However, if you can get that vehicle looked at 20 to 30 times, it's going to turn 29% faster. And if you can get that vehicle looked at over 30 times, it's going to turn 44% faster. So the secret in selling more cars is getting more people that are interested in that specific car to realize that you have it on your lot. And that's what we do. So we, car clicks, it's an advertising program that really finds people that are in your marketplace searching for the types of inventory or the inventory that you have on your lot and we find that customer and we drive them right to the vehicle detail pages and the search results pages on your website. So it's very easy uh, to understand how it works. Every day we upload your new and used inventory on about a hundred different sites. All right? so Every day, we're going to take your inventory and promote it on the AOLs, the Car and Drivers, the Lemon Freeze, Google, and Bing, all these different places. Okay, we only advertise your inventory in your market, and it works like this. So this is the automotive network of traffic. So one of our sites is LemonFree.com. Gets a little over a million unique auto shoppers every single month. When someone is searching in LemonFree.com for a Jeep Wrangler, in this case, uh, in this zip code, about 100 miles that they said they configured the search, our dealership's inventory are going to be rendered on the site. At this point, there's no cost. It's free. No idea what it keeps doing that. So it's free. So your inventory is displayed with priority. So the consumer, when they get to this uh, automotive portal, they know the price, they know the color, the mileage, they know the year, the make, the model. And only when they click on the vehicle are they charged. And I'll explain that in just a minute, okay? But when they click on the vehicle, the beauty of this program is that we don't open up the vehicle detail page of the third-party portal, which no one wants to put their information in. We take that consumer searching for this used 2000 Jeep Wrangler Sport. They already know the price. They already know the color. They already know a lot about this car. They want to find out more about it. We take them to the vehicle detail page of the dealership website. Let me ask you guys, where would you rather your customer be? On, a vehicle, on, on the vehicle detail page of Auto Trader or on the vehicle detail page of your website? Everybody knows that that the answer is your website, right? So that's where we put them. You've taken the time, you've optimized your site, you probably have Carfax or AutoCheck, you've probably got a way to, to appraise their car, to grab leads, to chat with the customer. You have some additional uh, information like maybe uh, um, 
max information or pure cars, you know, reviews, everything's in there that also, while they're on your vehicle detail page, they can look at other inventory. So this is one, one way that we help market your inventory in automotive portals. The second is we, we leverage the search engines. So what we do is we, we pull your inventory every single day and we dynamically build uh, vehicle ads for your specific inventory and then we advertise them on the search engines. So you're saying, hey, this is pay-per-click. It is pay-per-click, but it's done in a way that we lock in the price and it's very effective and it drives people to directly to the vehicle detail pages on your website and I'll talk more about that in a minute. So for example, someone's searching for a used 2010 Ford Explorer XLT, you know, we'll get your we'll get your inventory on there. We can add your price, the color, we can add everything about the vehicle. 2011 Hyundai Sonata for sale. We're right there. Again, these are consumers shopping in your markets and your zip codes that you sell into. All right? Very specific, used car Santa Fe, we're building lots of different terms. Again, the beauty, when they click that ad, they're going right to the vehicle detail page on the car that they're interested in. We're also mobile, we're mobile friendly. Mobile is doubling. If you look at your analytics, probably about half of your traffic is coming from a mobile device. You've got to, you've got to A, if you don't have a mobile website, you need a mobile or responsive website that captures that traffic and tracks that information. Um, and we are mobile. Uh, mobile ready on our site uh, in our program. So the, what we do is we look at the automotive, we leverage the automotive networks and the search engines to dramatically increase the traffic to your site. You know there's a famous quote, half the money I spend on advertising is wasted, the trouble is I don't know which half. The beauty about mar uh, marketing online and, and our program is that we track everything. Everything is tra trackable through your Google Analytics. It's 100% 100 transparent to you, uh, our, our client. And what you'll find is um, more than 80% of the, the, the uh, auto shoppers that we send to your site are new visitors. They have not been to your site. They might have been in the market for your product, but they haven't been to your website. They haven't considered you. So if you look at this as an example of the analytics, uh, of, you know, it's going to come in in the car, uh, car clicks, uh network, show the sessions, the percentage of new new users, the bounce rate, the page per session, the average time on site. Bounce rate is a little higher than your typical uh, pay-per-click and a lot of your, some of your other traffic, but it's by design because we, we are finding people searching for a specific car and we land them on that specific car and they get every, all the information that they want. But if you look at what this program costs, and I'll get to that in just a second, compared to what you're paying already, this is a fantastic program. It's a great way to, to add more shoppers to your site. We're working with some very big groups around the country right now that trust this program and that are adding more stores all the time. And the reason is because we lock in the price at $1.88 per customer. There's no setup fees. There's no management fees. There's no long-term contracts. This is a pure ad buy. How, how many consumers that in your market do you want additionally to your website? That's what we do. Um, Nick showed a website, carclicks.com, earlier. That is not the, uh, the correct website. Our website is automotiveinternetmedia.com, and then go backsplash carclicks, and you'll find out some more information. Um, but we would love anybody that's interested. Again, there's, it's, there's no long-term commitment. No amount of money that you want to spend. We have uh, dealers that are spending 500 bucks a month with us. We have dealers that are spending $7,000 a month with us. So it's completely up to you on how many more customers you want to your, uh, uh, to your inventory and how many more cars you want to sell. I appreciate everybody's time. Nick, I hope you were able to get into the, uh, the site. Great presentation, Tony. Very well done. and. Very much appreciated. Uh, again, if you have a, a question for, for Tony French with uh, Automotive Internet Media, please use the, the questions box on the GoToWebinar control panel. And, and just a reminder that we are recording today's session, so we'll make that recording uh, available to you uh, as soon as possible that you can review the information that, that Tony shared and 
and share it with other folks at, at, at your dealership. A lot, of, a lot of great information you went through, Tony, and, and just wanted to, to circle back and, and just, again, just discuss just how much, how valuable the, that is to have the uh, potential buyer land on the uh, vehicle detail page of, of a store's website. Uh, just how, how critical is it to get a potential buyer to that stage, and, and what often happens uh, from there if, if the buyer gets that far? Well, what we, if you compare like uh, our traffic to uh, traditional pay-per-click, so you know, there, I would say that most uh, dealers out there are spending money in pay-per-click, and the average cost for paper most pay-per-click campaigns are somewhere between, let's say, say three and five dollars, depending upon who's actually managing your campaigns, right? Well, if you're spending, let's just say you're spending four dollars to acquire a customer through traditional pay-per-click marketing. Well, that customer might just be interested in, um, you know, calling your service department for for an oil change, right? They they could be interested in uh, lots of different things. So it might take three or four clicks at four dollars a click for someone to actually be looking at your inventory. So. The so way our program is designed is that we're only interested in people that are searching their inventory. We're not buying terms like Chevy dealer and things like that. We're not buying these big terms. We're specifically finding people searching for your inventory, and then we land them on your site. And it's, uh, I think, the, the, the greatest thing about the program is that it's very effective, very uh, uh, inexpensive when you consider the amount of money that most dealers are paying for other online programs. When you say I can, I can, I can provide, let's say, a thousand auto shoppers that are interested in your vehicle to your website for eighteen eighty a month. That's a great value. You can you can compare the amount of people that you're getting from other other uh, venues and what you're paying for that. It's triple in most cases. Very, very good, Tony. Uh, a question that just came in from, from one of our uh, dealers who have joined us uh, uh, along the same lines of some of the metrics you just mentioned is uh, the dealer is wondering what, what is the normal ROI uh, on your clicks for the, for the dealership? Uh, I guess kind of touched on a little bit, but maybe elaborate more on what the, what the typical ROI that, that dealers are getting with the, with the solution. Yeah, so the the ROI it's it, it's kind of across the board when you can look uh, when you look at it. I mean, it, the program uh, is designed to drive people to the vehicle detail pages, and depending upon lots of things like what website uh, the, the dealership is using, what kind of photos that they're taking, how are they pricing their inventory? You know, we see it across the board, but you know, I think if you really look down to the average cost per sale, should be somewhere. Uh, under a hundred dollars. Very good, very good. Well, that's that's good information. Good information for for dealers to consider, Tony. And and finally, just in the in the closing moments that that we have here today, just uh, again, what how how is uh, how does CarClick differentiate itself from from the other solutions that that might be in the market? What what. Uh, what makes it special? What what makes it uh, an avenue for dealers to leverage? Um, uh, uh, we really we we really only have one competitor in the marketplace. Um, it, you can consider, I guess, maybe a, a traditional pay per click campaign as a competitor as well. Um, but our main competitor, if this if you're looking at this type of program, is a is a, a product called Lot Links. Uh, Lot Links works very similar to the way that we that we uh, work, with, especially with the automotive portal side. Um, we both are. They call it deep linking. They deep link. We we call it clicking to the vehicle detail page. Uh, it means about the same. Again, they're using a lot of the same sources as we are. I think the difference is that we're, uh, you know, quite frankly, a little bit more economical. They're charging somewhere in the three to four dollar range per click, and we're charging, uh, you know, under two dollars. So, uh, if you look at just the pure cost of the program, um, 
it, you know, we can drive for the same budget. We can drive twice the amount of traffic for the same budget. So, you know, uh, what if you if you were spending two thousand dollars in our program? Uh, versus, you know, theirs, you're probably going to get 500 people uh, to the site with them. You're probably going to get somewhere around 1,200 and plus with me. So uh, that's that's the competitor uh, lot links. And again, I think they're doing a good job marketing their program, which has been really good for our program as well. Uh, I've been telling people, hey, a, a rising tide floats all boats. So it's great, you know, we, we, we encourage more types of uh, discussions about this. Uh, and secondly, and finally, is just the traditional pay-per-click, right? Traditional pay-per-click, it, it really depends on um, how good the company is that's mar managing uh, your campaigns and managing your budget. You know, I, I've seen all over the board from some of the bigger players and bigger names where, you know, it, it, they just kind of have a set it and forget it approach. They set it up and, you know, they provide you some reports and at the end of the day, they're just spending your money. You know, uh, we take a quite different approach. We're really looking for um, traffic that uh, is inventory based we're not going after your name we're not going after your competitors we really take the inventory based and and quite frankly it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of what what you might call a, a pay-per-click arbitrage we we know that we've got to find good quality traffic at a lower price than a dollar 88 and you know we kind of have a little bit of markup in there and we're, we're we, we go into the premise pigs get fed and hogs get slaughtered right we can provide a dealer a great price for great marketing. They're going to be with us forever. If if we're overcharging the client and we're not providing good quality traffic, then we have an attrition problem. Right now, we have neither. We have good clients that's been with us. They're adding stores because we charge a, a really good price and for good, great quality traffic. Very good. That's Tony French. He's the... Uh, president of Automotive Internet Media. Thank you so much for the great information and, and thoughts today, Tony. Uh, thank you, Nick. And also, thank you to uh, Chris Hill, the um, uh, manager of special projects with the Mannheim Wholesale Institute uh, for joining us today. As we close our, our webinar session today, I just wanted to share a little bit of information uh, with you regarding the 2014 Used Car Week conferences, the CPO Dealer Forum, the Subprime Forum, RE3, and our flagship event, the National Remarketing Conference. These four conferences, through individual presentations, panel discussions, small group workshops, and, and those all-important one-on-one networking opportunities, they set the stage for the future in all facets of the remarketing industry, providing actionable ideas and more results insight for this year and beyond. These are the leading industry events in the used car space, and there's something for everyone, from dealers to remarketers to finance companies and repossession agents. So please join us in Las Vegas in November at the Red Rock Casino Resort and Spa Used Car Week runs from November 10th through the 14th. More information is available at usedcarweek.biz. And finally, if you're not already a subscriber to Auto Remarketing's publications, I certainly invite you to visit, it, visit autoremarketing.com and sign up for your free subscriptions today. Our free e-newsletters keep you up to date on the industry, trends, regulatory updates, and more. All of that's available at autoremarketing.com. So thank you again for joining us today for this latest installment of the Auto Remarketing Training Series, and we look forward to when we can connect again. Thank you so much.